Hiram on the tea toilet. One of the things that we want you to do is go home and practice this. Why don't you go home and practice in your living room how to praise Him? Why don't you go home and, 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 and practice driving in your car how to praise Him? And then you'll get so filled with praise that you get to the house of the Lord and it'll bust out with explosive expressions that you didn't even know you had in you. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, it's true. It's true, it's true. I know it's true. I've seen it in everyone who's done it. I, I, it's true, it's true. I know it's true. I've watched how God performs it. He builds up a man and causes him to increase and strengthens him, yes, more and more. As he flows and functions and operates in the Spirit, he sows into a realm that produces those things of eternity. And out of his life comes forth the sound of authority. And out of, the, out of his life comes forth the power of the wellspring. No more is it strains of religion. No more is it stale emotionless expression. God will have his church. Amen. You can be seated. Tonight I want to just let you know that every offering that God has received and every offering that is before Him right now is on fire. And if you're not on fire, you're not an offering that He's received and you're not an offering that is before Him. We pray tonight that you allow that to be changed before you leave this place if you're listening by the web. If there's things going on in your life that has kept this wonderful glory of this expression of the Spirit of the Lord, that which adorns the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Joy. And peace. And His love. And the expressions of divine power and authority. Miracle working power. Word of knowledge. Discerning of spirits. <laughs> These things adorn the house of the Lord. God wants, to, God wants to use you to make beautiful His church. Hallelujah. I pray tonight that you will recognize that if you have unclean lips, if your lips have been involved in speaking things that are not right and not true that you would recognize that the Lord would come and do a work greater than he did for his prophet Isaiah when he took a coal from off of the altar and an angel, a seraphim, flew who, who worshipped the Lord and stood before God throughout the ages, uh, flew with a coal from off the altar, left the presence of the Father where he's always singing holy, holy, holy and touched the lips of the prophet. Praise God. And his lips were made pure. Hallelujah. Man, I'm telling you, I just, people, this is a, my whole plea, my whole cry. We go to, I've gone to different churches throughout the United States of America. Most of my life I spent traveling, going from church to church to church to church. And we've seen a bunch of sad and hurting people. And I've uh, been in conferences with many pastors and evangelists. And they say, well, you know, it's just a sad situation. Everywhere we go, there's sad and hurting people. And we're wondering where the glorious church of Jesus is. Well, those people who've come to know how wonderful it is to live in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, who no longer are held back or stopped by the powers of darkness. And I'm going to tell you, I understand the powers of darkness. I understand how Satan works. I understand his strategy and purpose. But I understand something even greater than that. I understand the power of faith. And tonight I'm going to minister to you on the power of faith. And I want you to grab a hold of it. I don't want you to just listen tonight. With your ears. I want you to listen tonight with your heart. I want you to know that God is willing to empower anybody who will take a hold of these things and do it. I recognize that for many people's lives, it's the same as it is for Peter. Maybe it is for everyone. Where the Lord said, Satan desires to sift you as a man sifts wheat. He desires to separate you out from the flock. 
Jesus said, but I prayed for you. And I know God's love and his keeping power. And I know there are many people with a lot of good intentions. And, oh, man, they really want to do what's right. But they've never really understood how to get into the fight under the authority of the living God and stand with the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. Tonight, we're going to teach you once again. Hallelujah. Well, one thing that God has made me is very patient, very long-suffering. Been doing this for 30 years. And you know what? We're going to keep on doing it. We're going to do everything that we can as long as we're in this tabernacle. We're going to stir you up and, and, and build you up by putting you in remembrance of these things. And what I know is this. I know that one day there will be a people's hearts who stirred to go all the way with God. And you know what's going to happen at that moment in time? That great outpouring that God has purposed to be revealed and manifested in his church is going to be seen. On Wednesday night, we're going to begin to start ministering specifically on a topic of what the church is supposed to be. And we're going to begin to reveal with a greater intensity the strategies that Satan has used to take you out. To stop you, to hinder you. Hey, listen, you say, well, I'm not taken out, I'm here. Praise God you're here, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of things the Father has for you that you've not stepped into. And it's just simply because the enemy's been able to take you out of them. We want to see you strengthened and empowered so that can't happen anymore. So that every, every weapon formed against you will not be able to prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to pray for you tonight if you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the uh, glorious expressions of the tongues of fire. We're going to pray with you, pray for you that you get tongues of fire because you either got tongues set on fire by God or you got tongues set on fire of hell. I say go with the tongues set on fire with, by God. And, you know, on the uh, day of Pentecost, what happened was upon each one of them when the power of God, the promise of the Father was pouring, poured out, what happened was uh, there was seen uh, resting upon each one of them uh, tongues of fire. And somebody said, where is that tongues of fire now? Right on the inside of my belly. And then when that gift, that wonderful expression of divine power and life comes to you, <laughs> and you're excited about it, and it's the real thing, it's the real deal, as they say, you'll give yourself continually to it. And that expression will begin to build you up. And you'll find yourself more captivated and swept away with that than anything else in this life. The cares of this life won't be able to work against you like they have. Deceitfulness of riches, the, the, the pleasures of this world. Uh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life won't be able to work against you. And I'm telling you, dear people, listen to me. Listen to me. The pride of life is the most subtle of all, and it is the most forceful of all, and is the most, it, it, it is the most effective of all. And we watch as so many people are, operate under its power. One time, I mean, I sometimes, rather, I, I, the gift of discerning of spirits is a burden. And, um, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to take it away, but, you know, it, it's a bit of a burden. Because what, especially when you don't have the right to t look at people and say, this is what your problem is, stop doing that right now. And if it were that simple, the gift of discernment would be a wonderful thing. And so what we're going to be doing is on, on this, once again on this Friday night, we're doing the School of the Spirit. And one of the things that I'm really moving fast towards is teaching people to function and operate in the gift of discerning of spirits. Not so much so that you would understand what's going on with someone else. But first and foremost, that you know what's going on against you. <laughs> okay, so you can understand all those voices going on in your head that they not from God. And uh, you'll be under, able to understand how to gird up the loins of your mind. Amen. You'll be able to understand how to take a hold of the weapons of your warfare and throw down and cast down imaginations and everything that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. So we hope that you come this Friday night. School of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Learning how to function, flow, and operate in the discernment of the Holy Ghost. That's what I'm moving fast uh, towards Ah, I just want God to speak. You know, I, if, if there's anything that I want to, to be a part of that is bringing glory and honor to the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, there's only one way that you can bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus, and that's to live a life full of joy, 
life full of peace and life full of love. Even if you don't have one iota of miracle power in your life. If you live a life full of love and joy and peace. And it has its ultimate expression when you come into the house of God. Oh my, you had to bring, you would have been that part of bringing great glory and honor to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you want to be healed tonight? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. What about the rest of you? Hey, you, do, you don't want to be healed? Huh? How many of you think that you might need to be healed? How many of you think there might be things in your life that need to be healed, in your spiritual life that need to be healed? There are. You know, I want you to know, I, I believe that faith is one of the greatest, most powerful outworkings of, of the glory of God that we can possibly have. And I want you to re recognize that things have got to be healed in our life before faith can work. And let me tell you, God makes us a whole brand new, new creation perfect from head to toe, creating his image and likeness. And then we don't follow on to know the Lord properly and we get abused by situations and we go walking in our own way and we get messed up. But Father's here to heal us. He's here to make us whole. He's here to, cor He's here to correct us and set our feet upon the right way. Isn't that a good news? Yes, Amen. Yes. Because when you can begin to fully trust God, Every one of the statements that Paul ever made about faith in the New Testament, he actually built it upon, well, let me say this, his whole doctrine of justification by faith was built upon Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, saying that the just shall live by faith. The Hebrew word there is emit. And it literally means to trust God, to trust him to the point like Abraham trusted him when he went and offered Isaac, his son, to the living God. First and foremost, people, if you're going to come to God, you must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When you believe that he is, you understand that there's a whole lot more to life than what you're living right now. And that if you should leave out of this world and go over into the next world, I'm telling you, will open up before you things that you cannot even possibly imagine right now. I'm telling you that's when you step into where it really all truly gets started. This is just the beginning of the beginning. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Papa's purpose to make sure you get all the way there, get received into glory. Amen. Amen. With, 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 with joy unspeakable and full of glory. To get, he wants you to be presented before him faultless. Isn't that good? Yes. Amen. How many of you like to be presented before the Lord faultless? Oh, Hallelujah. <laughs> That's all you got to do is just want it. Just want it and then be willing to be instructed because he will guide the meek in his way. The meek will he teach his judgments. You can't be self-willed anymore. You can't be self-determined anymore. You can't do it your own way. Plan it your own way. Think it out your own way. You've got to learn how to just say, you know what? I'm not living by my own ideas anymore. Most everything that you believe, you were taught it by your parents, by your peers, and by those significant folks that were teachers in your life. That's what you know. That's what you're made up of. You don't realize that, but it's true. Now what's happened is God has come along. He's made you a new creation. The Holy Spirit wants to teach you a whole new way of living. That's hard. Not hard for God, hard for you. Hard for me. Hard for us. And so God tells us very simply, I want you to learn to live by the word. I want you to speak the word. Don't let this word depart out of your mouth. I want the judgments based upon the word. I'm going to give you instructors. I'm going to give you ministers. And they're going to teach you the word. They're going to give the word of God to you. How many of you realize that every word that God ever put in this Bible, he spoke through a man? Would you raise your hand? Now, is it any wonder that he still speaks his word through men? <laughs> he still unveils, reveals his word through men. Every word in this Bible he spoke through holy men that he anointed to speak. And God has still anointed men to speak on his behalf. It Listen, you might be able with your finite analysis to get out your human uh, 
uh, magnifying glass and find something wrong. But I'm going to tell you tonight, Papa has nothing, no problem whatsoever with anything I'm going to say. If you have a problem with it, it is because you're walking in your own way. Papa, so full of love, so full of empowerment, so enriched us with his goodness and with his life, he has put us in a place to speak on his behalf. And if people will hear his word, and what you're going to hear from me is his word, and uh, we got uh, some people who are um, actually, uh, they'll grab a hold of verses of scripture that I'm speaking as I minister. And they will tweet them on Twitter and I guess get them up on Facebook, whatever. And so, you know, if you know how to do that, you can plug into that and watch as it goes. Because I'm going to declare the word of God to you. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Ha, ha. Hallelujah. And if you begin to hear the word of God, guess what's going to happen to you? Faith going to come on the inside of you and it's going to explode in your life and there's nothing more powerful than faith. Faith is the greatest power known to men. Faith will change the world. Faith conquers and subdues nations. Faith says mountains be removed. Faith plucks up trees by the roots and commands that they go against nature and be planted into the sea and grow. Yeah. Faith framed worlds by the word of God. Father wants his word to not depart out of your mouth. He wants you to live by his word. Hallelujah. <laughs> he wants you to thank his word. Hallelujah. He wants you to meditate on his word both day and night so that you can observe to do it. Hallelujah. <laughs> he wants you to understand that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. And should you live by his word, should his word work effectually in the, on the inside of you, you will continue to grow and you will continue to increase with the increase of God. Father will release you upon the nations of the earth. Yes, he will. He will release you upon the nations of the earth. This is what he purposed to do. I mean, he, worked, he only had to work with... Uh, Paul for like 17 years. And then Paul, man, he decimated everything. I mean, uh, he, 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 everywhere he went, people hated him desperately. They stoned him. They beat him. They assault, spoke all manner of evil against him. He said, we were, uh, he said I've been made the, the, as it were, were the dirt, or the scum of the earth. I've been cast down. I've been reproached by men, but always being exalted by God. Man, if you live on the opinions of men, if you get high on what everybody else is thinking about you, you can't make it here. You gotta get, you're going to have to get weaned of your own self-interest and of what men think and what you desperately need out of this world. People, don't set your heart upon this world. This world will perish. It will, it will, it's going to vanish away. It's going to be burned up in an instant. Come on now. Get your heart in heaven. Get your interest in heaven. Father's made a way for you. He's opened up the door of life. Jesus stands here, loves you more than you could possibly ever imagine. Calls to you continually saying, come live in me. Come dwell in me. And Jesus is the literal personification of faith. And everybody who seen him, they were able to begin to Hook up with faith. And so you saw and heard Jesus say many times. He would say things like, your faith has made you whole. According to your faith, be it unto you. A woman with an issue of blood who spent all of her living on doctors said within herself, if I can just touch Jesus, she heard about him, I'm sure she got to see him. Maybe she tried to be in some of the meetings sometime, but she wasn't able to get there. But her heart was captivated by the person she knew that he could do anything. That whatever God would ask him, it would take place. She knew that even went beyond that, that he himself was was a personification of everything that pertained to God's love and goodness. And she said, if I could just touch him, if I could just touch him, if I could just touch his garment, I don't need to touch his body. If I could just touch his garment, I'm not even, I don't need to even ask him. I don't even need him to tell me. I don't even need him to say anything. I don't need him to lay hands on me. I just need to touch a little bit of the cloth. 
I just need to touch something about him. And tonight, if you touch something about Jesus, <laughs> whatever you need, if you touch him with your heart, whatever you need, he'll give it to you. He'll make it completely whole. Blind men came to Jesus and said, Jesus, that I might receive my sight. He said, be made whole according to your faith. Woman had a, a woman had a daughter who was demon possessed and she wasn't of the household of faith. And so Jesus had to tell her, well, the uh, healing is for the children. It's the children's bread. You're not of the children. You're of another nation. It's not your time yet. But she began to so plead with him and lay hold on him and, and, and knowing that he had the answers and knowing that he would not refuse her and, and she would be willing to humble herself to whatever he said. And he said, woman, great is your faith. <laughs> you know where great faith comes from? It comes out of the people who don't deserve it. Who know they don't deserve it. The Syrophoenician woman knew she didn't deserve it, but she said, I'll just take some crumbs like a dog. I'll lick them up, pull them from the table, camp master's table. The people who don't deserve it, the people that go into great faith. The centurion also came to Jesus. His servant lied at home sick at the point of death. And once again, Jesus said, great faith. This is great faith. Another man who didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve Jesus. Was it worthy of Jesus to even come to his house? Hallelujah. Did it need Jesus to come to his house? He saw that in Jesus everything was possible. He saw that in Jesus he alone had all the answers. Here's where great faith comes. And Jesus said, your faith has made him whole. Where did they get that faith that Jesus said was theirs? Where did they get that faith that Jesus said was theirs when he said your faith has made you whole? When blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, began to cry out, Jesus, Jesus, you son of David, have mercy upon me. And everybody around him said, oh man, would you please be quiet? You're disturbing the place. I mean, you've always been just an aggravation to us. And now it's an embarrassment to the town. And now you're really embarrassing us more than ever before because here comes the prophet. Oh, you just sitting up here screaming, drooling. Just my, If you could just see yourself. <laughs> and he cried all the more. Hey, praise God. Somebody's with me up here. Hallelujah. Yeah, he just cried out all the more. Caravasa to Jesus. Jesus, thou son of David, ha, ha, have mercy upon me. And then Jesus stopped and says, what do you want? Oh, that I might receive my sight. Jesus said, be it unto you according to your faith. Your faith has made you whole. Where did he get that faith? It was all wrapped up in Jesus. Tonight, if you would just see Jesus. If you would just begin to understand him, the Holy Spirit's come to show you and reveal to you who he is. The Holy Spirit has come to make him known. All you have to do is spend some time with the Holy Ghost. If you just recognize the Holy Spirit, the more time I spend with the Holy Spirit, somebody said, what does it sound like? What does it look like spending time with the Holy Ghost? It's talking to the Holy Ghost first and foremost. If somebody's going to spend time with me, they're going to have to come over where I'm at, and they're going to have to address me, and they're, gonna, they're not going to say, Bill. They're not going to talk to Bill when they're talking to me. They're going to talk to Mark when they're talking to me. When you're talking to the Holy Spirit, you're going to talk to him just like that. You're going to say, Holy Spirit, hello. Holy Spirit, good morning. Holy Spirit, I want you to know that I recognize that you are the teacher. That you are my master. And I know that you've come to teach me everything. And I want to be a great student today. And if I'm misbehaving in any way, I want you to just grab hold of me in such a way that I know that I'm messing up. Because I don't want to mess up. I want to be your best student. I'm not perfect, but I want to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus I am because I'm complete in him. I've completed him. He's made me everything that he is. He's given me oneness with him. And now I'm growing and I'm maturing as a child. I'm a young man though. You know, I got proof I'm a young man. You know how I got proof I'm a young man? Can I tell you? Word of God abides in me and I've overcome the wicked one. Hallelujah. Ha ha. And it isn't two months at it. <laughs> Amen. It's not two years at it. It's not 20 years at it. It's proven to try and test it. You can follow me. I got something. I got something that works. Ha ha. 
I got something that works. I got something that keeps you steady with God. I got something that will cause faithfulness to be established in your life. Come follow me. Hallelujah. As I follow Jesus. And all I'm going to do is I'm talking to you about being happy. I'm talking to you about being full of joy. I'm going to talk to you about being full of the presence of the Lord. So the spirit of the living God begins to flow out of you as rivers of living water, beginning with praise and thanksgiving. And not just every once in a while on a Sunday night, every once in a while, you know, when you just happen to have an exciting day, you know, and if your team lost tonight, who knows? Maybe that would affect you. I mean, there are people that are affected by that. Can you imagine being affected by such a trivial thing? Some people's, some people's state of being is affected by the weather. If it's cloudy, they're sad. If it's sunny, they're happy. And they go to church. Listen, you want to break ties with the atmosphere. <laughs> you want to break ties with the state of circumstances and situations. We want you to have your life built upon the rock of Christ Jesus. And there's proof. There's proof as to whether everybody says their house is built upon the rock and not upon the sand. But, however, as soon as a storm or a circumstance or an adverse situation comes along, we watch houses fall all the time. <laughs> proof. People lose their peace. They lose their joy. They lose their excitement. They lose their encourager. When you get, did you know that if you're getting discouraged, it has nothing to do with the Holy Ghost? Nothing whatsoever. It's not the Holy Ghost. It's an evil ghost. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's an evil spirit. It's not the spirit of the living God. It's a demon spirit. Because everything God is doing is an encouraging event. Even when he corrects you and rebukes you and says, stop that nonsense. Huh? Don't allow that stuff in your life. It's keeping you from this life. I mean, isn't it a good thing that God's, God's got somebody in this last day who will pay, lay down their life to lift up their voice like a trumpet and say, Hey, you're doing it wrong over there. You can't have that stuff in your life and be right with God. If you want to hang on to it, somebody's going to have to show you you're not going to make heaven. And it's really not about what the people down the street's doing, what the other denomination is doing. It's about what you and I are doing. No one in this world can affect how this church is going to function and move into the glorious expression of Jesus except for you. You. You decide whether or not you're going to throw your whole life over into the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you'll just take a hold of this wonderful privilege that we have of knowing him and walking with him and having him come dwell and abide in you. Has anybody ever had the moment of great revelation where you recognize and have the expressions that Jesus Christ himself by the Holy Spirit was on the inside of you and you knew he was in you, that he is here. God is here. It's shocking when the revelation comes. It's a visitation because you're willing to participate. It's something that happens when you grow a little bit older. You know, when a child is a little baby, it doesn't really know much about itself. Did you notice that? It can't, it's just like, you know what I'm saying? It can't keep its size straight. It can't, it just, you know, all this stuff is moving around like this because it's getting wired, right? No, there's no, there's absolutely uh, no coordination skills whatsoever. And that's where we are much that way, you know, when we're born of the Lord. We're born like newborn babes and we're supposed to desire something. What is that? The word of God, hallelujah. So that we will grow according to the word of God. That our minds will now think according to the word of God. Instead of our culture and the things that we've been taught. and What people believe. We're going to start believing what God believes. We're going to step over into another entirely different realm. And then we begin to come of age. And as we become of age, Father begins to tell us secrets. His secrets are with those who fear him. He begins to tell us secrets. He begins to tell us about who we are. He begins to show us things that we didn't know about ourselves. You're kidding me. <laughs> and then, is that true, Lord? You gave me that. I have that. And I'm telling you, that moment in time, hallelujah, praise God. Listen to me now. This is a real event. When the Spirit of the Lord is able to show you 
that God, Christ Jesus, is in you. And now it's just not information that you believe. Praise God that you believe it. But now it's revelation, faith that is in you. I'm t it it, it, it will knock you out. It will, it, will just, it will absolutely waste you with tears and shaking and trembling and awe. This cannot be so. Yeah, but it is. And then you're never the same. And then he's got to say, he's like, okay, just be faithful with me. Walk with me because I got some more stuff to tell you. I got some more things to show you. The Lord prepares us to show us things. And the more that we have revealed to us, the more responsibility and the more accountability we have. And so tonight, and really just trying to lock down in this and, and, and get this out and, and still be able to um, do the things that the Lord w wants uh, me to do. And you get home and be able to get a, a night's rest. Uh, and of course, I'm going to pray that your sleep be multiplied in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray that your body be strengthened and sickness be taken from you. I'm going to pray tonight that all the pains and hurts go out of your life. I'm going to pray tonight that the discouragement and the disappointment that's been able to harass you, condemning, browbeating, accusing things, I mean, look, champions don't walk around be beating themselves up because they did it wrong. They step up and say, I'm going to do it right this time, coach. Give me another try. Huh? Uh, come on, are you listening to me? You got to get out of just disappointment and discouragement and, and being overwhelmed with failure. And he doesn't like me because he told me I didn't run the play right. I mean, come on, get <laughs> Get with the program. What place in life would you be rewarded whining about the fact that you didn't do the play right or you didn't perform it right or you didn't remember it right or you didn't say it right? No place. You can, not, if you, not if you have a purpose. Listen, God wants you to get a hold of this thing and start running your race, man. He wants you to run your race to win. He said, okay, Lord, show me how to stretch that thing out again. Show me how to breathe properly. Oh, God, I want to be, I want, I want to be faster than I am right now. See, God's not, God wants to raise a bunch of champions. Amen. Amen. Listen, the church is in peril. Where are his champions? Listen, his ch per church is in peril. Where are his champions? Where are the people who know how to stay in the Holy Ghost? Where are the people who know how to stay full of the Holy Ghost? Where are the people, people that are going to give their self so that the church might shine bright in the earth with praise, with praise, with praise? Not all these other ideas that people have with praise, with joy, with rejoicing, with excitement, being overwhelmed with the presence of God where there comes a great shout, hallelujah, where there comes a great cry. Praise is defined, the halil, the shimcha. Is, uh, those are Hebrew words to describe praise. The Torah, those are the Hebrew words to describe thanksgiving and joy and rejoicing. All of these words came, uh, uh, were developed out of the manifest presence of God coming upon his people that caused them all to shout because they were overwhelmed with the glory of Almighty God. That's, that's the Halil. That's the Shimka. That's the Torah. Hallelujah. Ah, we want you to come into the presence of the Lord. We got more now than they had then. It just it seems like that in many respects, they did more with what little they had than, the more, than what we do with the more that we have. But you're just going to have to say, no more. I'm going to give myself to shout, and I'm going to give myself to praise, and I'm going to give myself to rejoice instead of my, giving myself to fuss and, and discouragement and disappointment and unbelief. The more time you give yourself to doubt and unbelief, the more it is working against faith developing in your life. You're actually giving yourself over to the actual opposite thing that you want. Giving yourself over to doubt and unbelief. Disappointment and discouragement. Aggravation. Talking bad about yourself. Oh, I'm just this and oh, I'm just that and I'm a failure. I'm a failure. He's a failure. She's a failure. Would you like to be? I mean, there's so much failure attitude. It's just got to stop. And tonight I'm going to talk to you about faith. I want to talk to you about faith. Uh, you know, how many of you wear Nikes? Anybody wear Nikes? I really like Nikes because Nike is the way to pronounce in English a Greek word. And the Greek word is Nike. Uh, and Nike is spelled N I K E, Nike. And Nike, or Nike, huh? It literally means one who has, who is superior over all. Other competitors, superior. 
And that's the word that is used by John in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. He says, and you are superior. <laughs> and he said, and you are victorious. That's the word that it was translated, victorious. Huh? And this is the superiority that overcomes the world. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, I'm talking about a whole new race here. I'm not talking about the races of men as we know them upon the planet Earth. I'm talking about the new race that is created in Christ Jesus. Made one flesh with him. No matter what color of skin, no matter what nationality, no matter what geographical region you came from or your parents or ancestors came from. It's a new race now established in Christ Jesus. Set in heaven right now with him. Written in an authority with God. Uh, an overcomer, a superior person over all the competitors, over all the enemies. And, uh, you know, of course, Paul talked about us being more than conquerors with all the embattlement that is coming against us. But unfortunately, many of God's people have not found the overcoming life. This is the victory. This is the Nike or Nike that overcomes the world, even our... And that faith is the faith that comes by Jesus Christ. That's the faith that he empowers us with when we put all our trust in him. When we're certain and know that he will do it, that he can do it, and he will do it. Amen. Yeah, and that's where everybody who heard Jesus say, according to your faith, your faith has made you whole. That's where they got their faith. And my dear friends, that's where you and I get our faith. Jesus, you see, he is the word made manifest in the flesh. He is the word made manifest. The word produces faith. Jesus is that one who produce, produces faith. The faith that is by Jesus Christ. The faith that comes by Jesus Christ. The faith that is in his name. That is through him. That's what, you know, Peter was saying when everybody was all excited about the man who was crippled. Who sat by the gate called beautiful. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 16 he said, this is the faith which is by him. The faith that comes through his name. This is that working power of God that changes everything. Makes possible the impossible. This is that faith that overcomes the world. And if you want to understand what is important, you must understand this. God determined that you and I overcome just like he overcame. Like Jesus overcame. He wants us to understand a walk in the spirit, a walk with him, a victorious kind of living, a Nike kind of living, a superiority over all the competitors. And those competitors being the powers of darkness who are trying to take us out. He wants to show us how to walk in such a realm of love in Christ Jesus. Such a love in God the Father. That we more than conquer in all these things. Nothing touches us. Amen. A lot of people are going to be up against it. When they stand in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. And try to come up with all their little excuses about why they couldn't. Because Paul's going to step into the room. Little Paul's going to step into the room. Huh? Hallelujah. And you look at what he went through and you look at what he was up against. God allowed an angel of darkness, not a demon spirit. God allowed an angel of darkness to go everywhere he went as an adversary against him. And he said, well, the Lord allowed it lest I should be puffed up in my own self because I was I received an abundance of revelation. And so... Everywhere poor Paul went, that angel was stirring people up against him, speaking out the voices and lies that would hit people's minds. Because, you know, the angel didn't manifest and start saying, you know, something bad about Paul. He does what, he, uh, what all angels of darkness do. They speak against the anointing. They throw out the lies that are anti-word. They're anti-Christ. They're anti-anointing. They're words to block the word of God. They're the words of demon spirits. They're the lies of the powers of darkness to try to prevent the truth from going forth and you know they they had certain to a certain degree of an effect but of course 
Paul would begin to move in signs and wonders and demonstration of the power of God, blind eyes would start popping open, deaf ears, you know, people crippled walk. Now there were, the dead would be raised to life again. Now there were times where Paul got into adverse situations and really not a whole lot happened. You know, my goodness, he gets on a ship and the angel makes a, puts, puts together a storm for him, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it, all the things, all the imprisonments, the stripes, the rejection, the persecution, the people in the church didn't even like him. It's speak, why? Get Paul, it's all right, the water will not go away, I promise you. Just hang with us, breathe, please, please. You know, be busy about this. Be captivated by it. Please be captivated by this. This will change your life. Be captivated by this. I promise you it will, it will change your life. If you could just allow God, the Holy Ghost, to take you, take all of your affections. I mean, my son will be here in two weeks and he'll be singing. I'm captivated, captivated by you. I mean, I pray that everybody will sing that with sincerity and truth, that you're really captivated by him, that his word, you lock into his word, it's life to you. I mean, my goodness, when you write with God, your heart burns within you when his word goes forth. It's life and strength, this is bread. You're waking up right now because you're getting fed. Amen. Hallelujah. His word builds you up with the most, the greatest power that exists. The power of faith. A power that overcomes the world. A power that puts you into a place where all the things of circumstance, all the things of life, all the things of principalities and powers and mights and dominions and angels and things present and things to come would not be able to in any way impact you, infect you, or touch you in any way because you know who you are and where you're at and you know nothing can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Yay! And that you are more than conqueror in all these things. Why? Because you've got a faith realm of power and authority. This is what I want to teach people. God has demanded me, he said, you make them listen. If they leave, that's their problem. You make them listen. You lift up your voice and you demand of them to understand how to resist the devil steadfast in the, the greatest power that exists. It's the greatest power that exists. People have got to recognize that the pastor can see things that are going on and he tries his best to tell you, hey, there's a monkey on your back. <laughs> In the nicest way he can find to say it. And it ain't a monkey. It's a demon spirit harassing you who, whose purpose is to take you out. And it produces addictions and it produces ornery behavior and it produces all kinds of vile affections and appetites that have nothing to do with a transformed heart. It's the mind of Satan trying to impose and afflict upon you a torment that belongs to a realm called hell. <laughs> and Christ Jesus wants you to understand how to live with authority over all of those things to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. That is the power of faith. Faith, there's no greater power than the power of faith. For faith produces within us the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fact, while I'm preaching right now, while I'm speaking right now, you can be delivered and your whole you can be delivered of problems that have made you dysfunctional. You can be delivered and set free of, of chemical imbalances that causes your emotions to behave in the way that they do it to some degree. True. I mean, there's true. There's things where people, just, uh, they're, they're sick, they're diseased. They've got high levels of serotonin, low levels of serotonin, high levels of dopamine, other kind of neurotransmitters that have a huge impact on your endocrine system. And we don't go into all of that, but we know that there's these effects. They're just physical problems that people have. Many people are just depressed. They're not depressed for any other reason that they're sick, they're diseased. They need a touch from heaven. Tonight, you can be, have a touch from heaven. There are many people today who are stressed, 
have mental, uh, various different kinds of mental diseases uh, and, and, and that afflict them and, and touch them in various different emotional ways. Tonight you can be healed of those things. Tonight if you have glaucoma, you can be healed of glaucoma. Tonight. Tonight if you have cataracts, you can be he healed of cataracts. And I, I felt very strong with the Spirit of the Lord tell me this morning that the, he would heal cataracts and he would heal uh, glaucoma tonight. And so if you're here with cataracts or glaucoma, tonight's your night. It's a grand prize. We're calling out your number right now. It's like, a, you know, right? It's like you just had to call out the numbers, right? Okay, number uh, so-and-so, you just won the iPad or whatever. What well, tonight? Glaucoma. You're being away, out of here, gone, broken, power, but destroyed in Jesus' name. Why? Faith is the greatest power. Nothing can stand against the spoken word of faith. The prayer of faith works every time to grab a hold of that realm of the anointing. It's not a mental ascent. It's not a prayer of the mind. It's not a wishful thinking. It's not just praying the word, but praying the word to take you to that. It'll take you to that. These are things that get built up on the inside of you where you increase more and more in faith. You say, well, my goodness, blind Bartimaeus, you know, he really had it going for him because he could see Jesus. Uh, oh, well, he could hear about him. He never got to see him, but he heard. He heard about what Jesus was doing for other folks. <laughs> and that was in the rumor mill. <laughs> oh, listen to me. Tonight, the Holy Spirit will show you Jesus better and more plainly than the blind Barnabas could have seen. And faith worked for him to give him all that he needed. Tonight, don't be any longer stuck between two opinions, back and forth, wavering. Uh, one day full of faith, or, or rather full of belief, and the next day doubt and unbelief. Oh, let belief, let the belief that has been established in you to believe upon the name of Jesus arise in you to an outworking of faith. Mm -hmm. So I believe something. Do I believe it enough to do it? When I believe it enough to step out and do it, that's where faith comes. <laughs> when I begin to move, you know, listen, it's much just like, it, it's much like Samson. You know, Samson... He could have been doing things that are wrong, but he had an anointing. A grace was given to him. A covenant power and ability was given to him. And he could, was just like any other man, just normal in his strength. But as soon as he stepped out to do what it was, he had been given an authority to do. That power came upon him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Great strength came upon him. It did not matter what condition he spiritually was in. As soon as you and I begin to move out in agreement with God's word, as soon as you begin to get happy when you're sad, joy will sweep your soul. As soon as you lay hold upon peace when you're feeling uncomfortable and worried, peace will begin to rule you and saturate your spirit. You'll know all is well. <laughs> As soon as you take a stand when the winds of doubt, when the winds of unbelief would try to come up against you with a... With a, with a, with a or hurricane force. And you stand there in Christ Jesus' name. Knowing for certain that nothing can harm you or touch you. My goodness, dear people. There is no greater power than the power of faith. I want you to open your Bibles with me to First Thess Second Thessalonians. Chapter 1, I think. And verse 11. We'll just get over there and we'll discover. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God's speaking to you right now. He's speaking to you right now. God the Holy Ghost is here speaking to you. He wants to cure you, help you, make you whole, strengthen you, empower you, restore things to you that have been lost. <laughs> straighten out things that have been crooked. Huh? Say, I got a crooked thing in me. Well, let God straighten it out right now. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, and I was just believing God. Not, I mean, I heard glaucoma and I heard cataracts. I'm just believing God for diabetes in Jesus' name. If somebody has sugar diabetes, it, 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 an imbalance of the sugar in your body. Whether you're here or you're watching by the web or by the YouTube, 
right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be made whole in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father assures me of something great getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've also seen over and again. I've also seen over and again when the battle rages against you, when the storms of life and, and, uh, and the storms of Satan would try to raise up against you seem impossible to survive through. Just batten down the hatches because what's going to happen is great glory is going to come in the morning. And we've lived this. We've gone, we've gone from strength to strength. We've gone from glory to glory. Hallelujah. We find ourselves continually to continually increasing in faith because we're here and we should not be moved. I remember when I was a, a teenager and I was, I was 19. I, I gave my life to the Lord the first time when I was four years old. You know, and I've been baptized hundreds of times in water. <laughs> because every time there's baptism, I got baptized again. I'm in the Spirit of the Lord. Come on me. I just start crying as a little kid. And then my dad would just, you know, bring him on in here too, you know. I didn't get baptized. Every time the baptism was going down. And, and you know, it was that way too for me. Really, even <clears throat> when I was 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I, I mean, goodness, I had to be in every baptism kind of thing. Not as old as 24, 19, 20, 21. But, uh, you know, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> well, huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I got caught away. I got caught away thinking about that glory that I would experience over and again there, you know. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, I knew I had something good to say, but nonetheless, we'll come back to it in a minute. Second Thessalonians, are you there? Is everybody there? Are you there? Thank you, Lord Jesus. God's so good. He's so wonderful. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, I've just had so many wonderful experiences in the Lord, you know, my goodness. And they just keep getting better. That's all I can say. Oh, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus, for touching every person in here tonight so that they can have many great experiences in you. Hallelujah. Lord, that they can learn to be faithful and recognize that, that every bit of this walk is, is good from the beginning to the end. It's all good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Second Thessalonians chapter uh, 1 and verse 11. Paul says... Wherefore, also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The work of faith with power. Mm -mm -mm. The work of faith with power. God's called us right now into his kingdom and into his glory. It's not something that's just going to happen in the future. Because reality of it is when we were born of the spirit... We were translated out of the kingdoms of this world in the kingdom of the dear son. We understand being in the kingdom of the dear son, we have kingdom authority, go everywhere preaching the gospel of the kingdom. God has conferred upon us and given to us and baptized us in his divine presence, giving us his glory, the same glory that he received from the father, the same glory that he's always had. Father, the glory you gave to me, I've given it to them. Now, some people could just limit that to the Holy Ghost and power, and, and that's fine. Just limit it to the Holy Ghost and power. 
the Holy Ghost and the baptism in the Holy Ghost and all that he himself is able to do. Because think about that, dear people. If you would just, and I would just begin to cooperate with that realm in God, think about how much change would happen in, in our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, what is it that you want to do? What is it that you would like to do to the hearts of the people right now? What is it, Lord, that you want to say? Lord, what is it that you and your mercy and your grace would perform as an act of loving kindness so that those who are in this place, and I believe it's every person, would have a, such a radical change that it wouldn't be possible for you to continue to live your life as you have lived it. But that from this day forward, an event would happen. So Paul's praying for them. That they would be counted worthy. That So Father would do something for them. You want to read it again? He said, I pray that God would count you worthy of the calling and fulfill, do something for them. Fulfill, to fulfill it. Lord, you've made a promise to fulfill it. Lord, you've given an opportunity, would you fulfill it? Lord, we're here in a situation right now. We're here in, in, in a divine call. We're here in a divine opportunity. But will you bring it to pass? Is there a possibility that you could just go on and live your life and, 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 and in a way that is far less than what the Bible describes that you should live it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I started to sing a song the other day. I want more of Jesus, more and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I've ever had before. I want more of his great love, so rich, so full, so free. I want more of Jesus, so I'll give him more of me. The person who wrote that song backslid. Became a homosexual, fully given over to demon powers, and died in his sin. And today, tonight, is in hell. Because there was an opportunity. He wrote many great songs. There was an opportunity. And he stepped into his divine opportunity. And God wanted to fulfill all the promises for his life. But there was sin going on. Things that he wouldn't let go of. <laughs> That there were, there, were, there were wrong attitudes, wrong states, wrong decisions being made in his life. And though there came upon him a great anointing where he was going all over the world and became one of, the, one of the famous people that I knew as a young boy. Died in his sin. Oh, he ripped out of the realms of divine glory. There is, I could can, I can go, I, I, if I wanted to tonight... I could stand here, if I had permission from the Lord, I could stand here and go through a long list of many great men of God with great anointings and calls upon their life that I personally knew who backslid, became fully given over to demon power on the worst kind of way, all the way to apostasy, all the way to being a reprobate. <laughs> Oh, you know, it's better, it's, better, it's better to stay sad and unhappy and disappointed and discouraged and not really have much at all until you sort it out and decide I'm going all the way with Jesus. And then now that you've decided I'm going all the way with Jesus, now you can get happy and blessed and, and rejoicing and have all these wonderful things that pertain to life and godliness and his abundant life and begin to make a difference. And now there's nothing left for you outside of him. You want nothing else outside of him. Right now there's a lot of things you want outside of him. And that's why you get unhappy by the variableness of those things that you want outside of him. They still touch your heart. But God would bring you to a place that nothing can access your heart but the Holy Ghost. That nothing can influence your emotions and your passions but the Holy Ghost. That nothing can dominate your body, which is his temple, but the Holy Ghost. To live in divine health and live in divine blessings. 
to live in such a way that now if you need something, you, you need so you, you feel God wants you to do something, buy something, have something, that you say, Father, this is what I want, and I thank you, but you're going to provide it for me. Amen. And you just leave it, leave it there. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord moves upon you in such a way that you go, I, I call that thing come to me right now. And we live that way. I was with a friend of mine up in the Arctic. And up in the Arctic Circle. And I had just come in on the skidoo. And I come in on the skidoo. And, and one, so one, of the, one of the other guys, two of the other guys that was with us, one of them was a pilot. And the other one was a, just a helper in the meeting. They wanted to go out on the skidoos. They took off. And as soon as they took off and they got out, about five miles out, a whiteout came. And the pilot panicked first because he had been on rescue teams that went and found people who were lost in the whiteout. And he didn't take a GPS with them. So they were just lost. They couldn't even see their tracks. And my friend said, come to me now. And here they came within about 20 minutes. They were too far away to hear his voice. But they weren't too far away to come under the influence of the faith. Come to me now. I'm not losing. He's like, I'm not losing a soul out here. I'm not losing somebody out here in the Arctic. I mean, my goodness gracious. Plus, he's the pilot. We're not going to get out of here without him. (laughs) Come on. It's wonderful to arise in this faith that God has purposed to fulfill within us. It's his good pleasure to do it. Jesus said, it's Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But who's hungry for it? Who's so passionate for it? It's all that matters to you. It's all that your soul desires. This has been my cry. This is what's been going on in my life. A radical impact took place in my life. When I called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As an adult. Something happened. I said to the Lord, that's what I was going to say. Oh God, for you, I'll be like a tree planted by the water and I shall not be moved. Here I stand and I will not be moved. By your strength, by your power, by your grace, I fully resign myself to you. Take me, do whatever you want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's all you got to do. That's all you have to do. And you'll go and on a great journey in God. And you will find yourself mature in such a way that every year you're going to get more passionate. Amen. Every w- year you're going to have a greater operation of the gifts of the Spirit in your life. Hallelujah. Every year you're going to have a greater manifestation. 2014 is going to be a great year for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> because Father is about doing His work to fulfill all His good pleasure in my life with the work of faith. The powerful work of faith. Faith, the scripture says in Acts chapter 6 and verse 8, Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost. Huh? He was full of faith and what? Power. Faith is power. It's the most powerful thing that exists. The power of faith is the greatest ability that exists. And so because he was filled with faith, he was filled with power. And because he was filled with, this, with this, this power of faith, he was able to go and do mighty wonders and miracles. Mighty wonders. Mighty wonders like, come to me now. Somebody in a whiteout. Huh? Hallelujah. To stand in a situation that where that death is impending upon you. My wife and I have, have had many experiences in God. One night we were out with a bunch of ministers. We were out sitting with a bunch of ministers till three, four o'clock in the morning. 
They were keeping us up late because they were all drunk in the Holy Ghost. Everybody was sitting around the table staggering. Praise God. Hallelujah. Till <laughs> four o'clock in the morning. And I got in the car. And didn't realize I didn't turn on the lights. Lights come on automatically in my car. I was in a riddle car. I had no idea I was going down the highway with no lights. And there's this turn where people come flying around this turn to get onto an exit to get on an interstate. And I'm just going along. And the next thing I knew, we passed through a van or the van passed through us. Because I, we looked in, my, I looked in the rearview mirror and I saw the van, van sitting in my lane and he was there. He didn't move. He stayed there. I went on up over top of the hill and he was still there. I would imagine that he was whiter than white. <laughs> God has done many miracles of signs and wonders for us. Many amazing things that if I told you, you would not even begin. You would say, you're exaggerating. You dreamed it. No, 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 no. It happened. It was amazing because in his good pleasure, he's here with us, fulfilling his work of faith with power. He's all around us, moving things out of our way, uh, keeping us from accident, keeping us from sickness, keeping us from disease, bringing us into all his plan and purpose for our life, putting his hand of protection and favor upon all that we have. And no weapon formed against us is able to prosper. There have been many situations that I've been in, adverse situations that I've been in. I just, you know what I need to say? You know what I say? Oh God, arise for me. Arise on my behalf. <laughs> Faith, that takes faith to do that. That's a faith that he gave me. It's a faith that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a power with God. It's a power with God. Oh God, arise for me on my behalf. Behold them who persecute my soul. I'm not talking about men, ever. But powers of darkness, demon spirits, they would try to keep us from being who God has purposed us to be, to be effective in this earth. I'm so blessed by what everybody did today in the inReach. It doesn't matter if there was one person there or a thousand people there. Praise God for what took place. Because I'm telling you, that increases more and more. I know that, I know that, you know, I haven't really heard from all, any of you except for Daniel and Ruth Anna. And I know that they came back saying, Dad, we had the greatest results on this Saturday than we've had. And really a big part of it is going in the authority of the name of Jesus and saying here. Because I, we sent out a wave of people just to say, just to introduce themselves. Say, hey, we're here in the community. want to invite you to come. But when you come there in the authority of the name of Jesus, something on another level like that, we're here to talk to you about your soul. We're here uh, to, to meet any needs that you have in your body. Something else goes to another level. And when you begin to be faithful with it, when you all push through all the hindrances, because it doesn't matter what you're doing in life, when you first start doing something, you're awkward with it. Does everybody know that? You're not very coordinated with it. Are you understand that? Huh? And you've got to give some time to it. And if you give some time to it and you purpose to do it, you're not going to give up no matter how much of a hacker you are. Are you with me? Okay, I'm talking God. And no matter how much of a hacker you are, you keep giving yourself to it, you're going to get good. Huh? But what happens when you begin to walk this thing out with God and you give your life to obey Him and you say, Lord, I'm not going to be stopped and I'm not going to be hindered and I'm not going to be pushed down and I'm not going to be pushed around. Oh, God, I'm going to do whatever you say to do. And I'm the only way that you can get to that with God is because you don't count your life dear unto yourself. You count your life dear unto yourself, you're going to preserve your life. And say, well, I'm not comfortable with that. And what about or not bottom line of it is... Uh, there's really no battle that I've ever been in that I was comfortable with. Uh, every battle, every situation I've ever been in has been an opportunity for me to be strengthened in the power of God. But I had to allow that. I had to say no to retreat. There is no retreat. There's no retreat. 
If you think you can run, oh God, oh God, come rescue me. I'm rescue me. He's here with me. He's looking for somebody to knock this thing out. Break, pull down this power. Break these strongholds. Huh? Now I'm up against it and I want to run for my life? Come on. Come on. The Lord wants you to be strong and very courageous because it's the only way you're going to be able to go into the inheritance that he's planned for you. He wants to fulfill his good pleasure in your life. He wants to fulfill the good pleasure of his goodness. He wants to fulfill the good pleasure of, that he's, of all those things that he's purposed for you through the work of faith with power, a powerful working faith. To where that everybody's going to know who you belong to. <laughs> where everybody's going to understand that you are the people of the Lord. Because you ask the Father... Anything that you want him to do, and he does it. This work of faith with power that subdues nations is now being activated in your life just to subdue a neighborhood. Ah, neighborhoods first before nations. Two hands for beginners. Amen. 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 Start off with the nation. Start off with the neighborhood and go to the next na inward nation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then go to nations. After that. But you're going to have to stay with it. Huh? You're going to have to allow God to take and apply all these things in your life. You can't fear over anything anymore. You've got to understand that the, the beginning is just simply in the obedience of doing it. That's where the beginning of greatness is. Just in doing it. I'm going to give myself to doing these things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Father, he looks at us. He just looks at us and he knows. He knows how hungry we are. He knows how spongy we are for his stuff. And he knows how resistant we are. I never want him to look at me and see resistance. Resistance mostly comes because you're preoccupied with other things. You have other interests. The Holy Spirit is here to burn with this fire. The fire of God's presence in your life so all the other interests are burnt up. To where all that you want is Jesus. To where that you'd sing for the rest of your life, I, I want more of Jesus. More and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I've ever had before. I want more of His great love. So rich, so full, so free. I want more of Jesus. So I'll give Him more of me. And tonight, it would just not be a little bit more. With everything. Everything. Why don't you let the Spirit of the Lord search your heart tonight, search your life? Why don't you let God, the Holy Ghost, in the searching of it, show you the things that are hindering you, point them out, and then you say, okay, I'm not going to allow it anymore in my life. I'm going to number these things as my chief enemy. I'm going to number these things that the powers of darkness have done to come to stop me, to distract me, to prevent me. I'm going to mark it as my enemy, and it's no longer going to be allowed to work in my life because I have this authority in God. I have this power. I have this overcoming divine ability that quenches the violence of fire. <laughs> I mean, you look at the three Hebrew children as they're named in the, in the great hall of faith. In the list of those champions of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. That where, 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 where did their faith come from? Their faith just came out of an absolute obedience of total surrender over to God. That it doesn't matter what you do with me, I'm not disobeying God. And they're in that realm of that trust realm of it, whether we live or whether we die, O oh King, we're not disobeying God. <laughs> 
Whether we live or whether we die, we live only for the glory of the almighty God. We bow before no idols. If you could just see all the idols that you bow before. If you could see all the covetousness and all the self-interest. Because the Lord Jesus, he puts self as the greatest idol of all. He says, what shall it profit a man if he lose his own life? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What shall it profit a man? What should it profit a man in losing his own soul? Over gaining the whole world through the pursuit of self-interest. It's, it's vanity, in other words. And vanity is the word that is used for idolatry in the Old Testament. What does it profit you and me? If we walk out of self-interest continually exalting that above all these other wonderful things that God desires to do and the good pleasure that he has for us in which he wants to give to us all of the kingdom. In the Lord Jesus said, it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In Luke, he said, it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the Holy Ghost. So giving you the Holy Ghost and giving you the kingdom is one of the same thing. Whoa, 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 What happens if you have the Holy Spirit, but you still exalt self? Is that not idolatry? If self-interest pursues you to gaining just some temporal interest of some smaller thing. What shall it profit a man if he gains a house paid off in a nice car in the garage and he loses his own soul? What is he saying? He's talking about the pursuit of one's own self-interest. God will say, take so to you and I, he'll say, he'll say to us, your soul be at ease and take your rest. And that is going to be a blessing. But when we say, as the man who had a great increase of, of crops and a great bountiful harvest, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger barns and say to my soul, my soul, soul, oh, you have all that you have need of laid up for you. Take your ease, take your rest. God's simply going to say, you fool, that's your idol, that's your God, that's where you place the whole of your purpose in your life. People, we gotta, we got to be careful. Things going on that only the Word of God can sort out. God's Word is like a fire. It will burn up the chaff. It will burn up the deception. It will burn up the lies. Listen to me. It's hard to, isn't it? If I turn this up all the way up, it will probably, you probably still not be able to hear. You know why? The heart must change. For the ears to hear. Because people have got themselves into a condition in the situation of life where they've justified things. They've condoned things. They have made things right and brought things along with them that are really wrong. The Father wants to show you the things that hinder you, that prevent you, that keep this wonderful opportunity of the work of faith with power being manifested and revealed in your life so that you find yourself going from glory to glory, going from strength to strength. When the three root children, having given themselves completely over, resigned themselves totally to live for God no matter what the price was, then the flame could not kindle upon them. Huh? Then that's when they quenched the violence of fire. When Daniel would not stop praising God three times a day. Hallelujah. Lifting up his voice to praise God. When his, when his walk with God, giving honor to God above all the threats of men, stood strong. No matter what the laws of the land might be, he lived for God's purposes. There in that obedience, he was thrown down into the lion's den and faith was able to work. The power of faith was released through him in the lion's mouths were shut, stopped at the mouths of the blind, hungry, ravenous lions who ate up the condemners of Daniel before their bodies hit the ground. They were torn in pieces and consumed. Their bodies never hit the ground. That's how hungry those lions were. They had to sleep all night with a the prophet. They got even worse, got even <laughs> more hungry. 
Because just the hunger, the hunger of the men of God begin to overwhelm them. Are you hungry tonight? Yes. When you're hungry, a passion for Jesus overwhelms your soul. When you're hungry and you're thirsty, a passion for the kingdom of God so it captivates you that all these other interests don't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whether you, you don't worry about the clothes. You don't worry about the food. You're not concerned about your life plan. I, I, I've, watched many, I've watched many, many, many people turn from the ways of God. Say, well, you know, we're just going to be nominal Christians because we're going to, you know, pursue our own interest and we're going to get our self-gain. We're going to get ourselves established in a career. We're going to get ourselves established in a home and have some nice things for ourselves. And they do it. They'll die in their sin. They'll die in their sin. More than likely, that step of idolatry, I've watched it happen in many people. They don't return from it. They never return from it. Because they came at a crossroads in their life and they heard very clearly the Lord say, take no thought for your life. I'm going to take care of you. That's the place where the work of faith with power begins to be developed. That's where it first germinates. Within the framework of that decision, okay, Father, I give my life to you. If you give it to me, I have it. If you don't give it to me, I don't want it. I'm trusting you. I'm following you. Here I am. Take me where you will. My wife and I got married, you know, and I said, baby, I watched her for three years. I watched her make every move she made. I just watched her. I watched her see if she had arguments with people, see if she caused problems or what she was. She just happy all the time. She was always blessing people. I'm thinking, wow, this is going to be good. This could be good. And I just I watched. I watched everything. I just I took my time. I watched. <laughs> and then I said, okay, so you want to marry me? You're going to do whatever I'm going to do, huh? I'm going to go wherever I'm going to go, huh? I mean, because I don't even know where I'm going to go. So how about if I go to China? Because I'm really thinking about going to China. Will you go to China? I go to China. I, I, one of the biggest ministries in the world at that time, I had an opportunity to go and be with them. And I said, so what if we go and, we're, and we begin to travel uh, with uh, such such ministry? Are you going to go there? I'm going to go there. I said, well, what if we go out into the country in the woods somewhere and have a little country church? You're going to go, I'll go there. What if we go and we live in a tent in the mountains? Will you go there? I'll go there. I was chesting her on every level. I said, I don't want anything but Jesus. Will you go there? I don't want a house. How's that? Are you good with that? I'm good with that. I don't want clothes. Are you good with that? I'm good with that. Her dad said to me, he said, well, you know, I don't want you to marry my daughter because you don't have any money. I said to my wife, I said, I don't have any money. Are you good with that? She said, I'm good with that. She said, I have $300. <laughs> and we discovered there was an extra 100 there too, so it's about 400 <laughs> I don't have any money. You got, can we use your money? My money's yours. I don't have a car. What are we going to do? I have a car. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord looks at us and says to us, everything that I have is yours. You can have it, but you have to walk away from everything that you have that's yours now. And most people will not do that. I'm telling you, most of you here tonight, I don't say this in a condemning way, I'm challenging you. I'm telling you the truth. Most of you here tonight have not done that. And I want you to know that God has purposed to raise up great champions in the earth and he's looking for people who will deny themselves, who will leave everything. And when God, Father, then gives you things as time goes on, you just put them right up there on the altar and say, Father, they're yours. I don't want anything, Father. I'll tell Father, Father, I don't want anything. If you didn't give it to me, let it be consumed and burned up and taken away right now. I say that continually, ongoing. Well, I want nothing, I want nothing in my life that you didn't give to me, that you didn't place there. Lord, my heart's yours. I hear, I hear, you know, the Lord's saying, I am your exceeding great reward. 
I am your protector, your shield, your buckler, your suzerain, your benefactor, your provider. I am everything for you. Do you want me? This is where faith begins. It's the, it's the crossroads of faith. Mm. Mm. Do I have to go through a fiery furnace? Do I have to get thrown in a pit of lions? Mm. Mm. What if I have to go without food? Trusting you. Mm. What if? You stand there making the choice. Am I going to pursue it for myself? Am I going to get my provision, the things that I need to protect myself and take care of myself? Or am I going to, with total abandonment, follow him and trust him? Ann and I, it's 1985. We were up preaching in an Assembly of God church in uh, Michigan. We're, that Sunday night, finished the service. We've been doing some meetings there. Went, didn't know what we were going to do next. And uh, went to sleep that night. The Spirit of the Lord woke me up in the night and says, Now I want you to return to San Diego. That was a long time ago, man. And as I was returning, I met some men of God that are apostles. We were apostles by mighty works and deeds in other nations. And they said, Here's what the Lord says. Here's what the Lord will do. God himself, by his own hand, he shall perform it. And I came back to San Diego in 1985. And we officially started this church. And I thought, get ready, man. This is big. This is big. Because we, we had had some interesting things happen between 1980 and 1985. And now there's this thunderous authority of heaven. Now I'm married. Joshua's in the bakery. <laughs> the music team is under development. <laughs> Father wants to fulfill his, his good pleasure in you and in me in this church. With the work of faith. With, with, with this wonderful work of faith. That has an explosive expression of power. You and I have to be willing to give ourselves over to his word. To do it his way. By the Holy Spirit. If we will. The same word and faith that framed the heavens. Will bring to pass those things which he's purposed. He wants to fulfill them here. God's left us a promise. Do we want it more than other, these other things? Oh. He looks at you and me in our commitment and our dedication as much as he looked at Peter and says, Peter, do you love me more than these? And Peter says, yes, Lord, I do. Because Peter went fishing. You know, we thought... Jesus was going to set up the kingdom and we were all going to be sitting on thrones judging 12 tribes of Israel. He didn't. He died. He's gone back to heaven kind of thing. Here we are. I'm going fishing. Some people, when they get depressed, they go fishing. <laughs> there was this livelihood. That's all that he really knew outside of Jesus. That's all he knew. What do you know outside of Jesus? What is it that you know? He said to him, feed my sheep. Forsake it all. In other words, he's saying, forsake it all. Go do the work of the ministry. He doesn't say that to every person here tonight. You know what he says to you? 
He says, quit coming under the influence of demon spirits where you bring a sad countenance and a sad appearance and a, and, and, and a despondent heart where you look lukewarm even if you're not. Quit bringing that into my house. He says to you, be filled with the Spirit. Be happy. That's all he says to you. Your whole responsibility. Be filled with the Spirit. Be happy and be thankful. But what is that going to cost you? It's going to cost you saying no to all these things in life that is stealing your peace. Jesus said, I'll give you a peace that the world can't take from you. Well, then why are people getting constantly having their peace taken from them? Jesus said, if you take of this salvation, it'll be a wellspring springing up in you. The life of God will be springing up on the inside of you. You'll be constantly happy and satisfied with what I give to you. You'll never thirst again. Why do people are thirsty? <laughs> Father's got something wants to fill in your life. Will you let him? He, Jesus says, Peter, do you love me more than these? Peter says, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Three times he asked him. The Lord looks at us and he asks us. He asks us to the point of our willingness to become totally broken to say, yes, Lord. Yes, I'll do it. I'll do it your way. Hallelujah. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Father, you know that many of the people that are here tonight, they worked very hard today. They labored very hard today doing this in reach, blessing this region. Father, I ask you right now to bless them, strengthen them. Father God, I ask you to cause them to find a place of great confidence and great boldness in you that they walking around calling people into the kingdom. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that within the framework of this church, within these people that sit in here, that they would voluntarily become members in particular into the body of Christ rather than spectators waiting for the church to arise. That each person will recognize that they have a role to play. They have a very vital responsibility in a church if a church is to function in your divine power and your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray the spirit of wisdom and revelation take place in your life. I pray tonight that God will count you worthy and fulfill his good pleasure in your life this night. He will begin to be able, be allowed by your permission to start causing a great outworking of faith and authority through you so that you're able to rise up against all the powers of darkness that come to intimidate you, that come to stop you, that come to depress you, turn you aside and distract you, catch you away with other interests. And it will not be able to work anymore because powers of darkness have now found a superior foe. <laughs> superior. Amen. Hallelujah. Superior means victory, right? When you're superior to your competitors, you vi the victor, victor. Actually, a vic to be a victor is a synonym with superior. And I think people go, superior, superior. Look at what are you talking about, superior? Isn't that prideful? No, 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 no. That's, that's full of humility. Humility is to obey what Father says about us. Hallelujah. To be what Papa said we are. Hallelujah. It's not possible. It's not possible without faith. It's not possible until you say, I'm living by the word. Only the Holy Ghost has access to me. Only the Holy Ghost. I'll run everything off that doesn't feel like the Holy Ghost. I'll run it off. I'll get the, fire, I'll get the tongues of fire out of it, out after it. Amen. Hallelujah. Just receive right now the Holy Ghost. Just receive right now a fresh infilling. Just receive a fresh strengthening. Be strengthened right now. 
with supernatural power. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's it, Bubba. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God.